think that's the that's the bone crusher, and uh, Fulton may well be right. It, but it has been done twice, and we're hoping that it will be the third time. It was done in '73, and it was done again in '79, six years later, and then now it's five years down the track, and we're just hoping that we can do it. But uh, you know, uh, with regard to the game, uh, we were offered a game in the country against Western Suburbs in Newcastle. Who did win the Newcastle Premiership? But uh, as I've said many times, if, if anybody like Mortimer or Lamb or in fact any of my players were to break a leg or an arm or broken jaw, you'd certainly be locked up for being stupid. So we, we couldn't run the risk. Mm. So it's a bit of a dilemma really, isn't it? Catch-22, what to do in a situation well, it certainly like is. Um, I often thought about with the final series, because that's really where all the money is from the league's point of view. That's where most of the interest is, I would think. I think it would be fairly strong argument to say that more people in Sydney are interested in the finals than they are in the, uh, the actual premiership competition, the week-to-week type thing. Just wonder whether they, instead of cutting the finals back and making it a four-team final situation, where they make the finals uh, a bigger event even and in some way try and incorporate, um, well, say you've got a 12-team competition for half the season, you have uh, you know, everyone up against each other, then the top six teams maybe fight out a final series or try and work out, say, you have the finals over a longer period and, and, and you have a, uh, like you do with, a, say, the UFA Cup, you have um, an away and a home situation, you get points for an away and that type of thing. Oh, I tend to think tradition plays a big part. Uh, there's something very traditional about grand finals at the Sydney Cricket Ground and... Uh, you know, I think if they get too far away from that system or that that kind of um, concept, I think they'd be da- further damaging the game. Uh, I think the game's fine as it is in that respect. That that, that there is a bu- big build up to an end of season, the end of season playoffs culminating in a grand final. Um, so you know, I wouldn't stray too far from that. Maybe they might just divert, or they might just. Uh, go back with only 12 sides in, they may go back to a four-team system, but I, I've never given any consideration to the, the sort of things that, you, uh, that mm. you've you mentioned there. I, I'm a bit of a traditionalist, and I think uh, we do need a little bit of tradition behind our sports, and certainly grand finals, rugby league grand finals have got them. Well, I agree with you, Warren. Grand finals are a special day, and, and really the, the Sydney public love to see a decider, and, and the reason it's done the way it is with the, the uh, UFA Cup, the, the soccer in uh, Europe is that so many teams have got to travel so far, so that's why they play at home and away. But you know, here we, you've got the perfect setup to have a have a decider, and uh, I think if you bring any more teams, I'm in favour very much of cutting it back to four. I think if uh, you have five or six teams in there, you you're basically losing the incentive of the team striving as hard as they possibly can to make the semi-finals because uh, the the fourth and fifth teams and the, and the six teams will will then make it anyway. So uh, really, I, I think you've got to have the decider, and uh, and uh, you know it's. You'll see tomorrow it's already a sellout, and you'll see the atmosphere there tomorrow. And that, that's why that mm. they have to have that decider. They've got to have the decider. But I just feel if you can uh, have more, if you make the finals bigger, well, that's like I say. My argument is that that's what really the public is interested in is in the finals, and uh, that's where most of the interest is created. Yeah, well, I, I can't quite agree with that. I think the public are interested in ultimate confrontations, which means yeah, well, the it, final game. Uh, I don't believe by expanding the number of playoffs, what you're really doing there is that you're paying no credence to what goes on during the rounds. I think there's got to be rewards for the good and punishment for the wicked in, in the, with regard to the rounds. If you play successfully through the rounds, you're rewarded by p- being put in the final yeah. four or whatever. If you don't, you don't get there. And I'd hate to see a 12-team competition with six teams being given the benefit of playing off. What value is there in playing well? But you just go through the season, you see um, the games that attract the big crowds, the ones that the majority of people are interested in, like this season, where your Canterbury Parramatta games, your Canterbury Manly games, your Parramatta Manly games, St George in there as well. Whereas when you came to when uh, those top teams came to play the lower teams, no one's really interested. No one wants to go to those well, games. That's, that's what you'd get though if you were, if you extended the semi-finals to have six teams. No, Bill, then you'd, but you'd, you'd, you're only trying get, to say the people, you, the people come to the, see the top teams because they are the top teams. Yeah, St George, Parramatta, and Canterbury are the three teams you named, and they're the three teams that uh, ultimately came to be uh, will, will run first, second, and third if you want to. Uh, Caught that way, teams like Balmain and, and uh, Penrith and the other teams who missed out, they drew good crowds at different stages. But if you extend the the, the uh, semi-finals, I, I think uh, those teams should be forced to try and lift their standard and lift their quality uh, to come up to the good teams. And, and I don't think you uh, get higher quality by just uh, having a greater quantity in the semi-finals. I just think you should have the the top four teams and uh, let the losers please themselves and go away early on their end-of-season trips. Yeah, I just feel if you can get the top teams playing each other more often, you'll. Uh get that interest um, alive more throughout the season rather than just um, on the odd occasion through the premiership and then just through the finals where you do get the top teams playing each other. That's where you get your best football when you get the top teams playing each other. 
Well, I believe the people turn up to those because what they're doing is they're previewing what they believe to be the ultimate confrontations at the cricket ground, and uh, that's why they show the interest in the, in those big games. But I, I, I certainly don't think you should expand the final series any 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 wider than they are. But here on 2GB and News Talk 87 with our grand final special. It's 18 minutes away from five. We'll take a break. Back with more of your calls on 2690669. When Jenny said to me... Stephen, we're going to have a baby. I was over the moon. Naturally. But soon realised the addition to our family meant additions to make room in the family home. And that's when HFC backed us all the way. HFC Financial Services lend money for any worthwhile purpose with personal loans to $10,000 and home equity loans to $50,000 for approved applicants. HFC help you get the most out of life. If you're looking for a better life, you're the person we want to back at HFC. HFC Financial Services, 17 branches throughout Sydney. See page 1012 of the 1984 white pages. For years, we Scots have had our differences of opinion. Where's that car? I tell you, it was a big tavern. Oh, you're a mad man. It was a camera and just finish your fosters. It's your round. Today you'll find more and more Scots agreeing that there's no finer deal than your fosters. Ah, oh, that's a bonny lager. Well, this is Mike Cleary, the Minister for Sport in New South Wales, and uh, I know it's going to be a difficult decision and uh, it's going to be a great game, but I'm leaning towards Canterbury. I think that they have the discipline and the flair to be able to pull off this year's grand final. Is any Ford dealer selling brand new laces at used car prices? Yes, yes, yes. City Ford says yes, yes, yes. City Ford has just received a huge purchase of brand new five-door laser wells to sell at just $7,195 plus on-road costs. That's the price of used laces you'll find elsewhere. And there's a good selection of colours and accessories for early buyers. Yes, yes, yes. City Ford says yes, more open. At Crown Street City, City Camperdown and Mascot. We can't afford to buy fashion carpets. At Carpet City we can. We can? Carpet City has the Californian look range of wool plush pile fashion carpets, including all your favourite pastels, with a five-year guarantee. And Carpet City has prices so low, even we can afford new carpet. We can? At Carpet City we can. Carpet City, 290 Parramatta Road, Auburn, down the hill from John L. Motors, open Thursday night and all day Saturday. No one can give you better carpet value than Carpet City can. <laughs> can? Sensational sale prices. That's what the gas company are offering to celebrate the introduction of gas video a great new idea to give you free expert advice on gas and gas appliances find out more about gas video and their super discount prices from the gas video catalog available in the september issue of women's weekly or at your local gas center for huge reductions on cookers hot water services and heaters while stocks last call at your local gas center now and pick up your copy of the gas video savings catalog today hi australian sprinter darren clark with you I think Parramatta's going to win the grand final. I have the team to do it. They've got the players as like the likes of Ray Price, Peter Sterling, Nick Crone, and I think they can do it. I think they're going to walk all over Canterbury. Walk all over Canterbury. Well, there you go, Warren. You're just complaining that everyone was barring for Canterbury. Penal- they'll get penalised and we'll win. <laughs> this player could probably run all over you too, Darren Clark. Yeah. You're on 2GB News Talk 87 and uh, one of the uh, Parramatta players that Darren Clark will be hoping will be walking all over the Canterbury players tomorrow afternoon is... Um, Prop Paul Mayers. Good afternoon, Paul. How are you, John? John and Bill Fisher here along with uh, Warren Ryan, Paul. Uh, tomorrow's game, uh, how are you keyed up? How do you feel? Oh, well, I feel pretty good and going into the game pretty confident. You have to or, you know, you don't have to have any negative thoughts or you won't win. John Harker speaking now. Paul, happy birthday. Thanks a lot. W- when was it and, uh, and, uh, and why is the party delayed? What's that? Oh, well, obvious reasons. It was on <laughs> Thursday and uh, I didn't want to do too much celebrating during the week before this game. How was the final training session this morning, Paul? We went run real smooth. It was, went real good. One thing that always surprises not only me, I'm sure it surprises everyone, is is your mobility for for a big man. You you do a lot of mopping up in defence and uh, and often cha- you're spotted chasing uh, chasing centres down. Are you really just an overgrown sprinter, or? Well, that, uh, no, I just um, always done that, and I you know it's a, it's good to have, I think. You played in your first grand final last year, Paul, and uh, you're only a, only a young fella then. You're, you're 21 now. You're still only a young fella. But uh, how do you think that experience? It'll obviously help you tomorrow when you line up against uh, two fairly tough and hard men like Peter Kelly and Peter Tunks. Oh well, um, the experience throughout the season. I've learned a lot more this season since I played a full season of first grade, and I've learned just a lot more. You know, it's the whole season, not just a grand final. Leading up to tomorrow's game, how do you uh, how do you settle yourself down today, Paul? Oh, I've just finished playing tennis and uh, 
just had a game of darts at the pub with a few friends and I'll just stay home now, watch a couple of videos and have an early night. You feeling nervous, Guy? Oh, I probably will start getting nervous tonight, but uh, as of now, I feel pretty good. Paul Warren right on the line. Uh, it sounds like you're pretty versatile, yeah, the darts and the tennis and you're out in the backs and the fours. Can we, can we see you kicking a few field goals tomorrow, maybe? Oh, I can't give any secrets away. <laughs> well, our boys, look, I want to wish you a happy birthday and you, our pack has promised to give you your birthday present tomorrow. That's OK. <laughs> I'll accept it. Right, and Paul, um, tomorrow then, uh, I suppose uh, you'd be a... With um, playing in last year's grand final, you must be a fairly experienced man as far as grand finals are concerned now. And Parramatta in itself must be uh, class now as a fairly experienced grand final side. Everyone has talked about the fourth one on the trot. Um, when I say everyone, everyone outside of Parramatta. Has it been talked much about inside the Parramatta camp? We're talking about five. Talking about five. Well, <laughs> Always right. one better. It's going to be a bit harder for you next year, though, because you've got a few players going away. So really, um, one would think if you can get in this year, it's going to be... Uh, now, four in a row is, is well they all said three in a row was uh, impossible four in a row I suppose to some extent could be classed as impossible too well it's going it's to be a very hard game and you know it's gone, we've gone through the season and each time we've played Canterbury it's only been uh, a couple of points in at each time except for the last game mm. Paul, Paul the, the players in the Canterbury side uh, plenty of talk about Steve Mortimer and, and, and Terry Lamb but but Michael Potter you you often kick the ball yourself and, and the kicking game of, of Sterling and Muggleton will, will obviously uh, come into vogue tomorrow how does the side going to go about uh, obviously you won't be kicking down Michael Potter's throat but how do you go about keeping the ball as way as much as you can I know you're one of Parramatta's main chasers but Michael Potter he's a, a great uh, run, runner of the ball as soon as he gets it in his hand how are you going to keep go about keeping him uh, in control as, as far as when you're kicking the ball to him well, you never really try to kick a ball directly to someone, but it, a kick's only as good as a chasing team. But, uh, so that makes it, you know, even if you do kick to him and the chasers get to him, if they get to him, you know, it makes it a good kick. Uh, Michael Potter's one player you better get to and stop. Thanks very much and, and lots of luck, Paul, and uh, and uh, we'll see you out there tomorrow. And uh, as I said, happy birthday and, and may the best team win. OK, thanks a lot. Thank you. Paul Mears, uh, Parramatta prop, uh, should play a big part in tomorrow's game. It's 11 minutes away from 5 on 2GB News Talk 87. Our telephone number, 2690669. We've got a few callers that have been waiting on for a while. So let's get through some of these now. It's good afternoon. Hello. Yes. Um, I'd just like to wish Canterbury all the best for tomorrow. Um, I'm a St George supporter, but um, I'm going to go for Canterbury, and I think they'll do it on the day. Okay? Right. Thank you very much for your call. Bye-bye. You're on 2GB, News Talk 87. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Can I speak to Warren, please? Speaking. Oh, good day, Warren. Listen, there's just three things I'd like to say about tomorrow's game. I'll be out there and I'll be hoping Canterbury can do it. Um, Paramount has double markers on the charge down a kick, so I hope uh, you guys are... You, obviously, you are aware, but I'm just a bit worried about their uh, charge down tactics because they always seem to work because their markers don't usually stand uh, straight behind each other. Uh, that was my first point. And my second point was... Um, the outside backs, uh, there's been a lot of pub publicity this week in the paper about how Canterbury stand offside all the time. I think it's only um, human nature that uh, the referee tomorrow might be very careful and it sort of tends to sort of work against you. And one team sort of gets penalised a lot for it. So uh, I just thought I'd let you know that I think... <laughs> I know that they've got to come up fast, but I think that uh, the referee will come down pretty hard on that. And my last point, um, <clears throat> everybody knows that Kevin Roberts is pretty niggly on the uh, play-the-ball incident, so I hope it's all very nice and clean in that play-the-ball. I think I think you've covered everything fairly adequately there. We're we're aware of those three points, and uh, we're certainly uh, you know it's it's a bit annoying that the thrust of um, a lot of articles this week about looking at Canterbury's five. The referee's got to be mindful of the fact that he's there, and I'm sure he is to referee the rules. He's not there to referee us with our five metres. Uh, we're happy to keep six if he wants it, if he'll mark it. Uh, he's there to see that 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 Parramatta keep back their yardage too, and he's he's there to see that Parramatta don't jump early from double marker and uh, don't screw the scrum on our put in and a few other things too well, just as he's there to see that we did, we don't screw the scrum on on their put in but uh, the thing about it is that some of the, the thrust of media articles uh, tend to suggest that you should uh, referee one particular aspect of a particular side a referee should be mindful of the fact that he's there to referee the rules of the game as they apply to both sides and uh, I'm sure that he'll do that tomorrow and then I will see a very very good grand final yeah, so do I. I'm, I'm good luck to the Canterbury Warren. I just hope there's a lot of <clears throat> running tries and not too many tries from bombs. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, good luck, right Thank you for your call. That certainly knows what he's talking about. Likes so, likes tries from from running football and no bombs. Let's take another caller on two six nine eight double six nine. Good afternoon. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Very well. I'd like to thank uh, 
2GB on their broadcast, Greg Hartley and uh, Peter Peters. I think they're great. But also I'd like to mention, I've been in bed with the flu. I never miss a game. And there's one boy that they've not mentioned, and I think he, he'll be the boy that will see that Parramatta get a lot of possession, and that's Steve Edge. What a, what a great hooker and captain he's been. It's a, oh, he's a marvellous man. Yeah, it's his, his 11th grand final and uh, it'll be his last match. And, and so I'm sure the Parramatta players will all be out to, to send him off in a, in a big way. He's he's won three grand finals, uh, first grade grand finals with Parramatta, two first grade grand finals with uh, St George in 77 and 79. He, he won a reserve grade grand final with St George in 73. And uh, he's a great player and a great ornament to the game. And, and you wouldn't go uh, too far without... Uh, to, to meet, you couldn't go uh, anywhere to, and meet a nicer bloke than Steve Edge. And He's a marvellous man, and that's where I think Parramatta will win it. Right on, sir. Thank you for your call. Here's 2GB News Talk 87. Warren, uh, Steve Edge's role in tomorrow's game, I think the call is pretty right there. It has been overlooked, really, the role that he's, uh, he's going to play in the game. Well, John just said that the Parramatta players will be there to send him off in a big way, and I can assure you the Canterbury blokes are going to be there to send him off in a big way too. <laughs> well, the, one, the one thing he has done, sorry about that, Bill, I've just, just jumped in and cut you off, but the one thing he has done, of course, Warren, is his on-field captaincy over the years. Uh, you... In 1981, your side was in front, uh, from memory, if memory serves me correct, 11-7. Uh, you went down 20-11, to 11, and I, I won't just say that it was on-field captaincy. Maybe it was uh, injuries and, and, uh, and things that uh, did stop your side, but Parramatta really stormed home. And in a lot of the players who played alongside Steve Edge in that game uh, believe that his captaincy, telling them all the time not to panic and uh, to keep playing disciplined football, uh, was a big plus for them. Uh, you've got a great on-field general yourself, an on-field captain in Steve Mortimer. Uh, but he, he, he must be a big plus to their side, though, Steve Edge. Yeah, well, it's very difficult to see captain. See, I always say, if you go, we that go to games and sit on sidelines or in grandstands or wherever, we're deaf. We can't hear what's happening. We're, we're, we're not blind. We can see, but we're not privileged to be able to hear what's happening. So I say you can't. It's very difficult to see captaincy. You can see bad uh, captaincy decisions, of course. You know, we're kicking a goal when they shouldn't and playing certain sort of plays when they shouldn't. You can see those sort of things, but as I say, you're deaf in as much as that you don't know what's said out there, so I couldn't comment on uh, the calibre of uh, Steve Edge's talking, but uh, you know, back to the 81 grand final, I, I tend to think that uh, Bob O'Reilly had a big hand in their resurgence. Um, when that was 11-7, he, he instigated a try on, I think, the last play uh, by running down a very short blind side and taking a few good players like uh, Ella and uh, Sterling and company with him, and uh, that's how they... And then Cronin, to his um, credit, kicked the ball and a very uh, converted from the touch line with a very uh, difficult angle shot, and uh, and then we were on the ropes type of things. And as I say, the referee then didn't like to... Oh, it seemed as if that we couldn't get the ball in the last 17 minutes at all. They, we just All we did was watch 17 minutes of Parramatta in possession. It's 5 to 5 on 2GB News Talk 87. Hi, this is Doug Walters here. I'm... Uh Plugging for the Bulldogs on Sunday, I'm quite convinced that they can do it. They have been the better side all year, and uh, I'm quite certain that they'll prove it uh, on Sunday. I'm conducting a survey about household appliances from General... Who? General Corporation. Oh, sorry, can't hear you. The General Radio cassette's on. Oh, that's one General product. Any other? Oh, sorry about this. Now the kids are watching the General Remote Control Colour TV. Oh, General TV. Kids, fair go. Turn the General Air Conditioner on and get me a beer from the General Fridge, OK? General Air Conditioner and Fridge. Great. Thank you for your help. At last, a bit of peace and quiet. Now, what was the question? sewing machine costs only $399 yet still gives you all the benefits you'd expect. The Globe 896 from Bonina Sewing Centres of course. It's quality and reliability at a budget price and a joy to use. Featuring 14 different stitches, the Globe has automatic buttonholes, electronic speed control and much more. Remember you pay only $399 for the Globe 896. Check the white pages or ring Bonina on 4285399 for your nearest Bonina Centre. You're on 2GB News Talk 87, four minutes away from five, and this time of the day you think of Big Rooster, whether you're driving home or wondering what to have tonight. doesn't matter how your team went today. In fact, if your team went anywhere, well, especially your rugby league team went well today, you'd be doing all right. Big Rooster's always a winner, and it's uh, a big, big menu with big, big flavour of barbecue chicken or fish with all the trimmings and the chips. Well, they're Australian-style chips, and uh, they go down really well. So if you want to grab some Big Rooster after tomorrow's grand final, head to your, uh, your nearest Big Rooster store and probably after... After tomorrow, at least uh, Warren Ryan will probably hope for, Big Rooster won't be in the Premier's colours after tomorrow. 
No, well, I don't know about the big rooster. It's a big eel we've got to worry about. <laughs> I don't know what's on the menu tomorrow night at the Leagues Club, but uh, it might be baked eel. I don't know. I've never eaten any eel. <laughs> Should go down well tomorrow. Um, Warren, you've got, uh, well, this time tomorrow, the game will be all over and everyone will be saying why we won or why we didn't win. Um, is can, Do you feel you could change anything now for tomorrow's game? Oh, not really. Um I could probably make do something stupid tomorrow and muck them up, but I'll endeavour not to. So, uh, no, not really. I don't intend to try to change anything. But I think if we're not prepared for it now, we never will be. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, there'll be a, a minimum of fuss tomorrow. They'll just get ready and play as they always do. Mm. Warren, you'll be trying to reverse the feeling, of course, but how empty was that feeling in 81? Well, you know, it's not. It's never good. To, I, I don't even. I don't think anybody likes to lose, even in a premiership round. But when it's the it's the last game of the season, it is a grand final. Naturally, everyone wants to win them. The people that are involved in them, and uh, you know, it's a bad feeling when you lose, and you can't. It takes you a long time to get over it, and it also took us a while to get over the way you sort of were treated in '81. And I sort of said that if we win tomorrow, if Canterbury win tomorrow, I'd hate to see. Parramatta treated the way we were treated in 81 I'd hate to see them just have to slink off the field as though they were, no presentation. They were fairly unworthy uh, visitors there and, and by the same token if we lost it you know the same thing applied and the league's done something about it to their credit and there is a presentation uh, for both sides and in other words the, the, w they've got more now of the feeling that there is a sense of occasion about a grand final and that both teams have, have done a good job and have got there so uh, there won't be the, it won't be the sort of the devil in the deep blue sea feeling. You won't, you know. I know it's terrible if you do lose one, and uh, uh, it's the penthouse or the basement, I suppose, in a two-horse race, isn't it? But mm. uh, at least the league have done something about the sense of occasion, which I think t is to their credit. How much actual coaching do you do on on grand final day from the top of the members' stand? Do you send many messages down, or is it just a half half time chat and uh, leave the players to do what more, they can? More or less, uh, you know. I I wouldn't think that. Uh, a flow of messages would be too good because uh, if you get the f if the players get the feeling that they don't they don't make any decisions, I think you're only going to take away a little bit of initiative. And, uh, and I don't intend to send many messages out there. They probably might be intercepted. Mainly might have one of those walkie talkies <laughs> tuned in, see. And uh, so if I if I just sit <laughs> the there, ASIO spies again. If I just sit there quietly and let the players get on with it, I think they'll pro probably do all right. And I'll just talk to them at half time. Ryan and Warren, thank you very much for taking the time to come in with us this afternoon and uh, be part of our grand final special. Wish you all the best tomorrow, like we wish John Money all the best, and let's hope it's a great game and the best team wins. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for having me in. Now I can go back to biting my fin fingernails again. <laughs>Police are still searching for nine men wanted over the Milpera bikey shootout. A total of 27 people have been arrested and charged with seven counts of murder. The arrest started with police raids yesterday on 44 Sydney homes. Five bikies surrendered to police after the raids. They appeared today in Bankstown Court. Bail was refused and the Comanchero and Bandido gang members will re were reminded to reappear next week. The special task force is trying to trace the nine wanted men. A Russian submarine has reportedly collided with a merchant ship in the Strait of Gibraltar. American television reports say the Victor attack submarine has been badly damaged after hitting a Soviet freighter. Reports say the merchant ship is in danger of sinking and the submarine is spewing smoke. There's no word yet on casualties. Police hold grave fears for the safety of a nine-year-old boy missing from his home in Sydney's southwestern suburbs. 